classes okay so today we are going to talk about location okay location strategies so if you recall back uh, operations management relates to so many strategies uh, uh, what you call quality strategy process strategy uh, good design of um, I mean products and and so on so so imagine you are one of the operations manager and uh, you are trying to consider about trying to locate your uh, new facility or you want to expand or you want to you know invest in another country so these are you know the kind of things that you need to consider okay so location strategies is very important for uh, operations um, success okay and uh, the book is fedex federal express which is actually uh, overnight courier express service uh, today of course we have so many other express services okay federal express uh, so why do they actually locate their hubs they have hubs in uh, region asia you know in uh, europe uh, in america so that they can actually make sure the delivery of their uh, what uh, parcels or boxes or whatever you know uh, that is being requested by customers reach on time okay so that's why location is so important not only that for manufacturing you think about location as well so it is a strategic issue location is a strategic issue it's not something that you just uh, do not do any analysis you must think about uh, you know the location and we can we can we can uh, uh, look at you know the the factors that affect location decisions okay um, if you know the factors we can do some kind of analysis so there are methods for evaluating location strategies uh, location alternatives okay uh, today is quite you know quite easier you know easier because um, we have geographic information systems everything is google today <laughs> google maps is available and we can actually uh, uh, you know locate and see locations uh, everywhere but it's not just only it helps it's just, it's just a tool it's not uh, the final decision uh, that you can it's not the the only tool that you use okay and also service location service also is Practical, practically everything. Okay, practically everything that we need to think about uh, location. So by the end of this, uh, you hope hopefully you can identify uh, the major factors. Okay, even the book says seven, but I think you know you can come up with many other factors if you want. You know, if you do research, you will find many other factors uh, that will affect location. But these are the basic seven factors, and. Uh, we this already been done before labor productivity okay and it's just relating to location okay especially if it is manual operations okay there is a method called factor rating method and uh, it is a repetition another method is locational break even analysis the same method that i've introduced to you last week but now it is used for decision on location so we have two three locations of course, there are fixed costs, there are variable costs, then you can solve that mathematically or graphically. Okay, so you want to find the break even in which which location gives you the best, uh, you know, the, the cheapest cost, okay, cheapest total cost. Now, um, other than that, okay, I'll just introduce you to you the set center of gravity method. Uh, which is used for location is a very simple method it's not very you know it's not it's not very very you know difficult okay it's just a very simple concept about locating at the center of the gravity yeah? okay and finally we'll look at the uh, differences between service and industrial sector location analysis now i mentioned just now already that Location provides competitive advantage for FedEx. FedEx is a company that uh, trans, uh, transport or delivers uh, uh, 
couriers, uh, fast, fast, uh, you know, express services of goods or packages by customers. So they have the central hub concept, which enables service to more locations with fewer aircraft. For example, if I'm not mistaken, Hong Kong is still the hub for Asia region. That means US will fly to Hong Kong or even from within Asia will fly to Hong Kong. They will break up the packages into, they will deliver to Malaysia, go to Thailand and so on. So they have the central hub concept where they actually, uh, they have their own airlines, okay, Federal Express. So they want to enable service to more location with fewer aircraft. Fewer aircraft means cheaper. If you, you know, you have um, more flights and carrying little loads, okay, you will be very expensive. So they will, this will uh, match aircraft flights with package loads and you reduce mishandling and delay in transit because total control of packages from pickup to delivery. Okay. So that, that that's, uh, that's, of course, it's not only location. So you have to think about the systems integrated to the location as well. Okay. So location, the strategic importance of lake location is that uh, it is it is strategic. Basically, it's a strategic strategic decision, uh, and then one of the most important decision. How many times do you actually, uh, you know, when you want to set up a new factory? Uh, do you have the chance to change factory every year? Uh, this is a silly question, okay? Do you want to change your factory location? For example, this year, I have my factory in uh, Nagoya. Then I, you know, uh, sell that, and next year, I move to Yokohama. And then the next year, no. Location is a long-term decision. So if you build a factory in, for example, in Beijing, it is like 10, 15, 20 years of investment. It is not five, uh, maybe five years, but it is a long term. Okay, So that's why it is a strategic. And why it is important? Because it is increasingly global. Everything that company do today is very globalized. No more localized, no more localized. It is about, you know, uh, uh, recently Tesla, Tesla has uh, indicated they want to invest in Indonesia to produce uh, the EV batteries, electric vehicle batteries, you know, the batteries are very, uh, very expensive, okay. So Tesla is an American company, and they are willing to actually invest in of course, because of factors. So we'll look at the factors after this. What are the factors that determine, you know, companies willing to locate, willing to build a factory, not only factory, because when you build a factory, you're supposed to actually build the network of your transportation and also your supply chain. So it's not only location decision, it's also supply chain decision, okay? And, Location has significant impact on fixed and variable costs. Okay, fixed costs because you need to build the factories, you need to be the you bring the equipment. So those are, you know, fixed costs, and also variable costs because you are going to pay for the salary, you're going to pay for the utilities and so on. A cheaper place, for example, Vietnam is cheaper than Malaysia today. 20 years ago, Malaysia was cheaper, 20 years ago. But now Vietnam is competing and, you know, <laughs> overtaking Malaysia in terms of, you know, able to produce and uh, give uh, you know, lower variable costs, okay? And of course, uh, so this, this impact, eh? so you have to think about location impact on fixed and variable costs. And the decisions are, um, uh, this one I mentioned just now already, uh, made relatively infrequently. You don't want to change your decision very, very frequent. Not every five years, not, not every 10 years, I don't think. Unless you are just an assembler. You know? Assembler can move anywhere. <laughs> but, but if you have very thick, high fixed costs, for example, you invest in very heavy machineries, robots, automation, no, it is going to be long term. Eh? Okay, so 
it's a long term decisions and uh, once you commit to a location many resource and cost issues are difficult to change because because your location if you depend on the raw material for example in malaysia there is oil you know there is uh, gas oil and gas so it's cheap to get oil and gas in malaysia because it's near the location so if for example you you know you need a lot of gas you are you're producing uh, aluminium plant you know so so probably it's cheaper to you know smelting melting this aluminium but you have to bring the aluminium from outside but if you have aluminium already in your country then i mean that's why I made decision okay so we'll see at the fact factors that actually important when we make the uh, location decision so basically the objective of location strategy is to maximize the benefit of that location that you selected to the firm to the company for example for intel you know intel the producers chips uh, microprocessors you know so they have a factory in malaysia in penang so it's a very long time already like 30 years probably 30 over 40 years and they are here but uh, not not really they are now r and d center okay very small manufacturing because manufacturing have moved to to china <laughs> for the past 15 years actually for the past 15 years uh, malaysia have lost a lot of their manufacturing power to china a lot of uh, you know intel they move out uh, garment uh, garment you know garment making shirts making uh, trousers shirts you know this branded ice and laurel you know they used to be in malaysia but they move out to vietnam move out to china so this is the objective of uh, location and the options actually include expanding new accessible facilities that mean if you expand new facilities then you you are talking about location unless you are expanding at the same location and you have the land you have to you can let you can expand or you want to maintain existing and add sites this is adding sites means you have a new factory beside the old factory you have another new factory in front of the old factory so this is you know uh, also location uh, decisions you closing exist, existing and relocating that is also a location decision close factory in malaysia open factory in uh, vietnam that is also a location decision okay I just found this from the internet just now. Okay, uh, so I just showing to you, Intel, the uh, Fab and assembly and test sites. Okay, the green one is the assembly and test. So Malaysia is uh, they have a assembly and test. Vietnam, okay, and Chengdu assembly and test. Wafer Fabs in Dalian, Israel, <laughs> Israel. Okay, uh, Ireland. So so this. It, so they are they're making these decisions and they don't want to you know continuously change the decisions <laughs> they have been very long in malaysia you know right so so this is an example of intel and i also found toyota toyota has uh, you know factories in malaysia in uh, vietnam so these are the factories eh? but you can google this and see so these are location where they have office or okay maybe they don't have factory they only have office they only have sales so these are all decisions that will actually you know move forward and support their strategy and mission you remember when you talk about operation strategy we have mission vision so this will support okay right um uh, any questions any anything that probably you want to share if you you know there are china here actually tianjin there is a china office in chengdu there are big in it's quite big in china okay beijing shenyang office and uh, they have factories uh, factories all over probably okay i don't know where they have europe okay so this these are decisions of course in the long run uh, and 
and you can see how successful companies uh, strategize eh? strategize and I, I you know I like to um, look at these things and admire how companies actually move forward okay how companies actually become bigger and successful okay they become world giants uh, basically world giants it used to be it used to be uh, you know electronic companies like Panasonic but no more <laughs> today Panasonic Sony also ma ma ne <laughs> today only Korean companies right uh, Hyundai uh, LG okay so learn from these companies learn and look, look at how you know they actually move forward right so location decisions are based on uh, if if it is based on low cost it will require careful consideration okay low cost strategy remember we have low cost strategy differentiation strategy okay uh, and also uh, another one niche niche if i'm not mistaken okay so we have strategies so if it's a low cost obviously you will find that's why company go to vietnam you know china low cost malaysia okay because they of course if it is uh, it's not you know trying to uh, abuse okay these are strategies strategies that's why we can go to africa if you want africa has a very low cost today you no know, big opportunity in africa and africa is still undeveloped you, need, you can develop and you can actually that's what china have done as well okay so once it's placed meaning the the, the location or the factory <clears throat> the location related costs are already fixed in place okay so once you fill build that that facilities that factory or that warehouse and it is difficult to reduce okay is is already fixed there so so it is uh, it's really really a very important decision really very important decision okay and uh, determining optimal facility location is a good investment so you need if you need the time to do the analysis you better take the time to do the analysis okay factors that affect location ah now we we go into some of the factors that makes this company locate in certain you know locations there are so many factors but these are the most common one okay uh, of course globalization adds to this complexity why because we have uh, you know uh, market economics we have uh, you know countries that actually try to attract investment by giving some incentives okay some countries give incentives trying to uh, lower the word is lower eh? lower mean to attract eh? and also try to build you know uh, depend on communication okay there is a rapid reliable transportation that's why advanced countries europe you know there are a lot of investment even internal investment between european countries or even from uh, you know americas right um, so because of this eh? so it's uh, adding complexity ease of capital flow is it easy to actually uh, you know bring your capital to a country you know what if the country you know suddenly uh, take over all your capital <laughs> how, how many countries uh, invest in north korea you home do countries invest in north korea I don't know. North Korea. You know North Korea. North, North Korea is Korea. totally North North Korea. <coughs> oh. Maybe ten or more. Because it's close. It's a closed country. It's a communist closed country. Not like China. China China has opened up. You know, because before that it was closed. But you, you know, you know the the the. Uh, something difficult to understand is in China is a communist country, but it's also a capitalistic country. So I don't understand. <laughs> it's a it's a mix already. No, I think it's a it's an open economy today. Okay, but when I say ease of capital flow means like this: if I invest in the country, can I 
you know, gain profit and take out my capital if anything goes wrong. For example, if there is political unrest, you know, if there is political issues, right? And also there are difference in terms of labor costs between countries. That is also, you know, uh, something that that is uh, making uh, one of the factors that you need to make, eh? that you need to consider basically. You need to consider. And you need to identify the key success factors. Okay, What are the key success factors? At country level, at regional level, at town level, at province. Okay, so it depends on countries and also location. Right. It doesn't matter. Well, you know, this is just a map of US. It can be Japan, it can be any, any country. It doesn't matter. Okay. So the key success factors at country level. Meaning, first of all, you know, uh, uh, for example, Intel. Intel decides to choose to decide whether I'm going to build a factory in Malaysia or in uh, Singapore or in Hong Kong. So this, you know, countries, they they break down and they uh, they, they decided for a list of these few countries. So what are the success factors that you need to consider or things that you can assess? That you can you can give some grading, eh? political risk and government rules, attitudes, incentives, okay, at the country level. And then, uh, what is the political risk? Is it politically stable? Are there you know a rule of law in uh, in US? Yeah, US is okay. So government rules, attitude, incentive, that one. And then culture, culture, and economic issues, cultural in terms of acceptance of foreign investment acceptance of you know uh, rule for example malaysia is an islamic country muslims there are many muslims so if uh, investment of uh, alcoholic drinks for example you know uh, kirin beer <laughs> want to invest in malaysia it's not really you know a good Market because you know Muslims don't drink beer, don't drink alcohol. So, uh, or, but there are Chinese, there are Indians. So you know, but it is the the government will try not to allow, you know, things which are against our culture, our culture. Okay, and uh, and also economic issues. What are the problem? What are the economic issues that exist? But of course, today in COVID, many countries are still struggling. Okay. You know, Malaysia is also one of them trying to, we have a lot of our GDP is not growing and there is a lot of, no, no jobs, no job, factories closed down, shops closed down, no job. In Malaysia, we are having economic problem, okay? So that is, uh, and currently very few foreign investment is coming in because of no transparency in government. Government is not transparent. You may look like we are doing very well about COVID, but we are not doing very well. We are struggling, lockdown for one and a half years. Lockdown, you know lockdown? I cannot move. Okay, so what? The lockdown has not solved the problem. Yesterday it was 7,500 cases. 7,500 cases. So, lockdown, why? Why problem? Because some factories, many factories, no, no. <laughs> okay, location of markets, meaning where you're going to actually sell your product. Okay, is that a, a, you know, a good market to actually uh, distribute and sell your product? For example, if uh, Toyota set up a factory in... Um, in Kentucky or somewhere, do you think there is you no? Know, yeah, there was a market for Toyota. That's why they invested in US. Okay. So, um, so location of markets, eh? markets specifically, um, labor talent, attitude, productivity is you know the the labor having competency in working. Good working attitude, or are they, you know, very uh, laid back? Laid back means you know relaxed, not not as hard working as Japanese, for example. Japanese are very hard working. 
Japanese are. So productivity very high, but in some countries, productivity very low. You know, some countries very low. So that must be understood. So you need to do some investigation and look at it. Availability of supplies, communications, energy. Supplies means the raw materials. You know, you need the factory that can do maintenance. Do you, does the country have that maintenance capabilities? Or you want to have a design? So do they have enough design engineers? For example, okay, so that is also related to number four. But availability of supply, communication, good communications, good, you know, internet services, you know, good, uh, not only that, uh, infrastructure for communication of traveling. Japan is very, I mean, China also today is very, very advanced. And they, they have uh, your, you have your bullet trains also, right? Your, your Chinese Shinkansen. Japan also have their Shinkansen. So communication means not only in terms of, you know, your, um, what do you call communications, but also your, in, your connection, uh, connection between one place to another place. Energy supply, some countries won't have enough energy supply, so you need to actually build up. I remember when I read a book called uh, China Safari. I read a book on China Safari. So China, when they actually invested into some uh, Botswana, if I'm not mistaken, one country and a few other countries, you know, they, when they find a raw material supply, there is no roads. You know, China uh, government, when they invest there, they even build the roads because they know if you have the raw material, there is no roads, you cannot bring it to the port. You cannot export it. You cannot... So you need the infrastructure, okay. They don't have um, power generation plant, okay, power generation. For example, to produce uh, aluminum, you need energy, you need electricity. Say so they build electricity generation plant. Because, you know, Americans, they go to Africa, Oh, you don't have road. Oh, no need. We, we don't want to invest. They go back. <laughs> they go back. They lose. But I think China made a very, you know, strong future. Okay? Future is a very futuristic uh, decision. The country doesn't have infrastructure. Help them build. They don't have ports. Help them build. Uh -huh. Now you are taking all the, you know, China is going to rule the world. <laughs> China is going to rule the world. Okay. <clears throat> but that's my opinion. Eh? You, you may like it or you may not like it, eh? but uh, that's my opinion. Eh? Basically, you know, that's how big countries, uh, like before, you know, America. America is, uh, I studied in the US. I, I stayed in the US in 1979 until 1983. Four years I stayed there. Here, here in Miami. Okay, here in Miami, Florida. US a big country, very big, huge, too many people. But the people in China in US, many people, they only know US. They are very, you know, they live under, you know, in Malaysia, they live under the coconut, you know, just by themselves. They don't understand the world. They do not, if I ask them, no, they ask me, you, where you come from? I told them I come from Malaysia. And they asked me, where is Malaysia? Do you still live on trees? They asked me this question. Do I still live on trees? In 1979, I remember that this American asked me this question. I told them, no, I have house in Malaysia. Do you think we are still in jungle? <laughs> so... So it's a very bad attitude of some Americans. They, they think that they're the best in the world. They think that they are number one, but sorry, you know, some are good people. I'm not saying that they're not good people. They are good people. But the thing is, they are geography. Geography, you know geography? Geography, you mean location of Asia, you know? Uh, we Asians, I think we are more understand of the world location than these Americans. That is my, you know, anyone of you have been to America? 
just 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 a question have any one of you been any one of you been to america no eh you should go lah one day you should drink you know go there and see the people you know whether they 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 want to listen to you you know okay come back to my my lecture sorry i i i you know uh, i went astray a little bit okay so political cultural location labor talent availability of supply combination energy and also this exchange rates and currency risk this is also something that companies will actually have to these are the key success factors but of course you can increase you can find out other more if you are do if you do research probably uh, it's more than this this is just general knowledge yeah? so you go to the next level that means now i'm trying to let you think that location first country level then you go to the regional or community or some province okay so the key sectors in the province level is the corporate desire whether they they want the location to be in the middle east whether they want to be in the you know asia is very big they want to be there south east asia or south east asia they want to be in malaysia because you know it's you know for example companies from saudi arabia for example they are very comfortable to muslim so they want to invest in malaysia for example okay they are very near to our you know culture okay attractiveness of the region labor availability like chengdu or even uh, shenzhen they attract the uh, design also the innovative industry the entrepreneur companies right so the attractiveness what attract that region what that region is famous for what for example in france france for certain region are famous for perfume so they they attract a lot of perfume manufacturers to set up their facilities there or even uh, you know uh, wine making for example or sake uh, dokode uh, nihon sake ichiban uh, yume ah uh, yuma yusuke wakaru i think kushima nigata nigata janai <laughs> nigata hmm Hmm? This country, Abun. Fukushima, Fukushima ka. Ah. companies has ma many good sakes. Ah. So that is called Recently, attractiveness of the region. I mean, they, they attract, okay? Uh, you know, become, and also if, if it is a tradition, it is a tradition that, you know, people invest in Penang, in Penang, electrical and electronic industries in Malaysia, in Penang, There's a state in Penang which is actually electrical electronics, you know, companies, which also correspond to labor availability and cost, cost and availability of utilities, the environmental regulations of that region, and also incentives by the government, uh, whether there is a pioneer status. Pioneer status means if the technology is new, then you can actually. Uh, Uh, enjoy like five years no tax corporate tax because you are investing in a new technology you know in malaysia we have that pioneer status eh? okay and fiscal policies that attracts these uh, companies okay near to raw material proximity proximity means near to raw materials and customers so that is also the the key success factors at the regional level and also land and construction costs so this is also probably going to be uh, you know factors that will be included in the uh, consideration okay so these factors can be used later on in our factor analysis method after this eh? we can i will show you the factor uh, analysis and you go to the site itself site site means or is already for example you have zoomed down from japan and then you zoom down to for example uh, okayama then you zoom down to mizushima <laughs> mizushima is uh, mizushimoto okay <laughs> so Mizu mizushima is already here lah site site okay so why you have to have that site site in the place uh, site size uh, because you want the big area 
land is cheap there uh, then probably you know you you know you have that that key success factors land and cost size site uh, site uh, size and cost and air rail highway and waterway systems uh, used to be waterway and now we don't have waterway uh, uh, so that this connectivity and also you know be able to communicate eh? Zoning restriction, this is US. Eh? US, they have zoning restriction in terms of where you put your factories versus where you put your, where there is a community. They separate out. In US, there is separation between uh, manufacturing places and also, um, they call it uh, housing, eh? house. Near to services. Services, for example, maintenance services, engineering services, and also, you know, uh, courier, FedEx, <laughs> delivery, you know, uh, or even others, even others, you know, shopping facilities uh, and all those things. Housing, if you have one, you have a factory and you need 5,000 workers. So you need a place for them to live. You need to have dormitories. If there is no dormitories, is there houses? Are there flats or, you know, uh, apartments? Okay, and also when they move the, when they go to the factories, do you need to actually supply uh, to have bus services? Okay, so at that area, they have bus to actually bring the workers to the factory, for example. Okay, so it should be, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of decision, eh? a lot of things that is related. Eh? And then the supplies needed uh, in terms of, uh, uh, what they call utilities, probably, okay, water supply, electricity supply, and so on, okay. Gas, uh, gas also. And then environmental impact issues. What is the uh, effect of having a factory that produces or process chemical, okay, for example, you produce process chemical. Do you actually, you know, uh, not pollute the environment, no pollution, okay, or even... Uh, um, you know, uh, give out uh, gases that actually impact the community. Eh? Like, why, like why I told you my house is just beside the factory and uh, so far I have no, <laughs> there's no environmental impact. Uh, only once in a while they release this, uh, this uh, gas, okay, this. Uh, anyway, environmental impact issues should be considered. Eh? There is the uh, so-called global com com competitiveness index of countries, okay, produced by the uh, World Economic Forum, if not mistaken, eh? or you can see for an, any other World Economic Forum. So in this um, index, in this uh, what they call an um, assessment, assessment basically. So they will actually uh, rank competitiveness of countries based on, you know, uh, some criteria, based on the criteria that probably we've seen just now. But this is, uh, of course, it's quite old, eh? 2012. Switzerland is the, the most competitive country, okay, followed by Singapore. So this can be a reference. Japan is number nine. Okay? Well, Japan is one of the, China is still at 26. Probably we can look at this year and see from the I. I, I, I think probably China has moved up the ladder, okay? But anyway, whenever you make a decision on location, you need to also consult this. Uh, you need to also refer to this. Global Competitiveness Report uh, by World Economic Forum and another one I forgot, okay? There are many, uh, there are not many, there are quite a few competitiveness. Have you seen this before? So you may want to just Google and type global and they produce you know this report and you can just uh, download it and you can see you know the uh, the uh, global uh, competitiveness uh, index of countries eh? uh, one thing that affects location decisions if it is a heavy manual operation manual operation eh? but now today probably this is not going to be very very critical because you know Labor productivity. So labor productivity is, 
we, we have done this before. Okay, labor productivity is the amount of output produced, uh, you know, by employee according to their wage. So you can see here, this is just a comparison. Wage rates are not the only cause. Labor productivity, you can lower productivity, uh, lower productivity may increase total cost. Okay. For example, South Carolina. So when to compare, okay, South Carolina, which is actually in US and Mexico. So this is uh, this is exaggeration, actually, eh? very exaggeration. Labor cost per uh, per day, I mean this is a basic basic wage, okay. So basic wage in South Carolina is 70. In, US, uh, in Mexico is 25. It's just saying that if the productivity is low, then your cost may be high. So you need to actually compare different locations in terms of the potential productivity, okay? potential product uh, level, uh, and determine whether it is actually much cheaper or probably the same, okay? But in this case, it looks like South Carolina is um, cheaper in, uh, because it is higher productivity, okay, compared to Mexico. But I mentioned this is exaggeration, eh? 20, 60 versus 20. Mm, I don't know, this is probably, uh, it's, uh, it's a bit too low, eh, basically, eh? right? Um, but anyway, the labor productivity can be used and uh, uh, to just compare, just compare. But I don't think it will determine the final location decision. Okay, this is just one, just one. Don't don't uh, you know? Don't use this as the main decision. You will make a mistake. Okay, <laughs> this is just one. Uh, exchange rate I mentioned just now already, uh, and it can have significant impact on cost because. Because fluctuation of exchange rates, and uh, if it is like you know, in 1998 there was a crisis in Malaysia, in the you know the new economies, Thailand. You read probably about this. Okay, the market, the money, the monetary exchange exchange rate, for example, Malaysia uh, dropped almost hundred uh, percent. Okay, that means for example, one US dollar was uh, like three, uh, one, uh, one US dollar was three ringgit, okay, and suddenly it, uh, you know, it was devalued, devalued, devalued until it became like five ringgit, you know, for one dollar, okay, so it became, uh, it became, became very costly for us to import things, and um, there was a crash basically, there was a market crash. And a lot of companies actually pull out the stock market crash. And uh, so because of exchange rate, it is already in the history. Business students will always learn this, study this about the, you know, uh, Josh Soros. <laughs> Josh Soros. You know, Josh Soros is one of the businessmen who Thailand market went down, Indonesia, Singapore, but recovered. Okay. So there is a risk. There's a risk. And you have to pay, you know, uh, for that, uh, for that uh, extra, okay. And rates of force, of course, change over time. That is also another thing. But any any company that operate globally will actually face this this risk. Any companies, all companies, okay, will face this. Uh, cost. There are tangible costs, uh, easily measured such as utilities, labor, material, taxes. All these are straightforward. You can quantify and you can measure. But there are intangible costs that is less uh, easy to quantify. You know, intangible things which are, for example, uh, the education uh, system in the place. For example, if you are an expatriate, you work in Malaysia, you'll define very difficult to find international schools unless you work in KL, Kuala Lumpur. But if your factory is in uh, East Malaysia, there is no international school. So, you know, you know uh, it will affect your, you mean the, the, the people who work. Uh, 
and then public transportation because it will affect productivity it will affect the way that you work it will affect you know your performance as well eh? community quality of life people who are used to you know uh, live in a place which everything is for example in tokyo tokyo uh, ichiban transportation uh, is ichiban ichiban e the shop uh okay uh, i'm not going to explain this and other things lah, political race I, I mentioned this also political race there will be you know national state government attitudes toward private and intellectual properties pollution and so on okay uh worker attitudes towards unions absenteeism we have a foreign workers malaysia we have uh, i think at least 4 million 5 million foreign workers from bangladesh from nepal from vietnam from indonesia so all foreign workers and some of them are illegal workers just to turn over and then uh, cultures okay? globally cultures have different attitudes towards punctuality malaysia we have uh, rubber time you know rubber time I only practice punctual. Jika ni narimas, jika ni narimas, start. So all of you are very good students because nine o'clock and nine forty you are here. Some of my Malaysian class, Malaysian class, nine forty I wait in front of this uh, class, wait five minutes, ten minutes. That is the punctuality attitude, very poor. So I always will. Uh, you know, school, school. You know, school. Uh, I would say, you cannot be like this because punctuality is fundamental for success. Basic. If a country want to succeed, it must be disciplined, punctual, on time. Okay, mm -hmm. but you know, if one time, 20, 20 times class, only one, then you move. One time you late, it's okay because it's uh, out of control. One of many times, but every time, dame yo. So they were, what a dame. Uh, that is culture. Culture. So you have to understand the, you know, the different cultures that exist. Because I have, I have seen, I've uh, been uh, traveling, and also I've lived. I've stayed in Japan for one year. I know the culture of Japan. I've stayed in US for three years, four years. I know the culture of US. I've also lived in UK for three years, four years. I did my PhD in UK. You know, you British are very conservative. You know, British, the British, they're very conservative. They don't want to uh, make you uh, angry. Don't don't want. They just uh, <laughs> they're nice people. Okay. <laughs> They're not straightforward. They're not. They don't stay out. Okay. Anyway, so so different countries will have different legal system, will have different ethical issues as well. Okay, ethical and also moral issues. But there are the moral issues of human being is same. You know, human doesn't want to be being bad. Okay, do bad things. This everyone wants to do good things. Anyone, any, any religion teach bad things? Any, any, if you, any, any, do you, do your society wants you to do bad things, ethics? Is corruption allowed in your country? Corruption, you know, corruption, bribes, is it allowed? Is it good practice? Okay. Is, okay, I ask the question, is bribe good practice? Yes or no? No. So it is not ethical. Correct. It's not ethical. Our moral moral uh, standards, you know, if I come to you and I I don't like you. For example, I go to Yu Hong. 
I first time I see you, I don't like you. I say to you, I don't like you. Then I come to you and slap you. Okay, ka? Damn it, Because that is not human. So there were ningen no, ano, practice jana. Ningen wa okay, good to people. Ningen will have to respect, respect, surikara, uh, and so on. So sorry, wa universal, na universal. Same corruption. Or you you do scam, you you cheat cheating, cheat people. You take other people money, you don't you don't pay back. This is common. And everyone, this is not you know this is accepted as human good. No need. We can go to religion, but religion. You know, Islam says this is okay, this is haram, this is halal. But don't, 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 don't view that day because if I, for example, sometimes you see he's a Muslim, but he also do bad things. Muslim Islam don't teach that person is a bad Muslim. Wakaruka, <laughs> wakarana ina yuma. Islam ne, Islam teach me good thing. Islam teach me I must help, I must pray, I must, you know, rehai na rehai, gokai, mai nichi, oinori na, gokai. So Islam watashiwa ano i Muslim na, good Muslim because I pray five times. So Islam teach good. Another Muslim, he's Muslim, but he drink beer. Dame. So Islam good. He no good. He is a very bad Muslim and also a bad human being. No good, no good person. No good person. Even he is Islam. So, so not necessary. All you know, a Muslim is follow the religion. Same like Christian. Not all Christian follow religion. So, so if person don't follow religion, religion is okay. But Not okay is the person. <laughs> For example, now you know in uh, in the in the television, they say Islam is terrorist. Islam is uh, you know kill people. No, Islam is okay. What is not okay is the person. He don't follow the correct Islam. That's why he become like that. You know, I'm a Muslim. I don't kill people. No, <laughs> no. Islam don't teach. He interpret wrongly. He follow the wrong teachings. So they were, you know, you know, what, uh, you need to understand that. Ranking, ah, no. <laughs> we can go corruption. We can go corruption. Okay. I wanted to talk corruption because corruption will depend, you no, know, will affect, affect, you know, will affect the country's level of, of confidence. So business confidence depend. You know, Singapore, for example, Singapore is very, you know, one of the best countries. Okay, uh, even so, we are not as good as that. Okay, I think Malaysia also between this level. So we need to, you know, try to. Change society so that we we become we cannot tolerate this. You know we don't we don't want this. But very difficult at the global level. You know big companies also involved in corruption. Right. Uh, okay. Proximity. I explained just now already. Yeah. Proximity to markets very important to services. GIT systems or high transportation costs make it important to manufacturers. Uh, you must be very near to your market, and also near to the suppliers, especially perishable goods. Perishable goods mean goods that actually can be uh, doesn't last long. For example, vegetables, you know, uh, things that have uh, chef life. Okay, perishable. 
And also, if it is very far, then it will result into high transportation costs if the suppliers are very far. And you talk about bulky products, big items, and you need to have uh, near to the uh, manufacturers. And also close to competitors. This is called clustering concept. So that you will, you know, uh, use the common, common, uh, what do you call, uh, factors that available in that area. Okay. For example, you know, the sake just now I mentioned, clustering, because every is there is there. And the perfume industry, you know, there are competitors, but it is clustering. You cluster the, the resources. Yeah? That means the, the information, the talent, and so on. Yeah? Okay. Um, so it's both found in manufacturing as well as service industries. Uh, so this example of clustering of companies like the winemaking in France, uh, they they enjoy the natural resources of land and climate. Software companies, that's why there's, there's Silicon Valley, there's Bangalore, because you are sourcing, you know, many talents at the same place, Silicon Valley, okay? And now, uh, ne uh, next year, we put in uh, Shenzhen, in the book. The book should put Shenzhen, <laughs> because Shenzhen is also a Silicon Valley <laughs> in China, okay? And other things like uh, you know Colorado and so on, uh, theme parks in Orlando, electronic firms in northern uh, Mexico, electronic firms, computer hardware manufacturers in Singapore, in Taiwan. Okay, so because Taiwan uh, they produce uh, these uh, chips. Okay, so they 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 need that talent and also the researchers to do improvement and uh, you know to produce new new uh, new new patterns eh, for making, uh, uh, to meet the, the needs of you know, current uh, products. Especially today, we talk about digitalization and also the use of all these um, 5G technologies, you know, robots, uh, smaller and smaller products. So it is a clustering of companies eh, and the rest of this, these examples. Okay. Uh, okay, let me just explain this before you know I uh, stop for a short break. So this factor rating method is very simple. We don't have to uh, what do you call? Uh, it's very straightforward. Okay, it's a very straightforward. Just we think it very simply. Okay, uh, it is popular because a wide variety of factors can be included in analysis. So it depends on. You know, whether it's a country level, whether it's a region level, or whether it's a site level. So the first thing we need to do is develop a list of relevant factors, which we have seen just now. The key success factors, okay, or the, or the critical success factors, CSF. You can call it as CSF also. You assign a weight. Uh, this, you need to do a little bit of some judgment.